right, here's another one with the bourbon. I don't know if that came through, but it's like a it's like a little little grinding sound back in there while it's sitting here. I don't know what the hell that is. But something's going on. I'm just gonna start posting all the problems I'm having and hopefully someone out there has had the same problem and it's an easy fix. Instead of just trying to take this damn thing to a shop and spend four or five grand on it, which I mean at this point. Probably wouldn't be a bad deal. This thing's a towing beast. Um, it ain't no diesel truck, but it, it does what it needs to do. So much better than the 6.1 liter. And here's another one. I'm gonna see if I can't rev this engine up. See if you can hear it. I can hear it fine, but will it come through in the video? I don't know, but you're gonna hear a rattling when I rev the engine up. I can hear it real good. Um. So I'm worried that might be valve train. Uh, I've been looking, uh, I've seen a bunch of stuff on stock or uh, stuck lifters. It's just a pain. Um, right now, this is my daily. I drive this thing back and forth to work. I don't want to, you know, start ripping it apart and then have an issue with, um, you know, not having a car to drive. Uh, once my Camaro gets out the shop, which hopefully is soon, I'll be able to start, you know, digging in a little deeper. I mean, I don't even want to, at this point, pull the valve covers off because I've had nothing but problems with this thing. So uh, I'll have another video posted when I get it all put together, but I had a huge fuel pump issue, huge. And the moral of the story was, is I replaced a fuel pump once, it went up again. I had, an, I had the issue is what we'll call it. So I took that pump out, put another pump in, worked for another two weeks, had a same issue, which was basically the thing stopped running. And then, uh, fucking shut this off and stop sucking down the gas. So basically at that point, I uh, started troubleshooting. I was having some issues and it turned out to be a ground. Um, but the first fuel pump that I replaced once I bought it, it was, that one was bad. I bench tested that and it stopped working. So apparently whatever ground fault we were having was killing the pumps. Um, so first original pump when I bought the truck was bad, put a new pump in it. That pump worked, um, two weeks, three weeks, something like that. Look, I keep looking at myself on the screen and not the camera. Never said I was good at this. But anyway, two pumps killed. New pump replaced, put in the last time. Bunch of troubleshooting, a bunch of issues. I had a, a light tester. I had my voltmeter out, and we were just going to town. And I finally chalked it up to a, a ground. And I fixed the ground. I re-terminated it. And I touched the 12-volt the meter to the ground and to the positive inside the pump i had the pump laying on the ground plugged into the truck positive off the pump ground to the ground lug that i eventually had to re-terminate and i was getting 12 volts so i didn't go any further but as soon as that frame twist a little tiny bit that that wire in that ground lug came loose so the way i found it was is i went underneath there and the, the lug was tight but i wiggled the wire to make sure the lug was tight and that wire just right in my hand off the lug so the lug was tight, the lug was creating the ground, but the wire going to the lug was corroded up in the wire. I had to cut like four inches of wire off and re-terminate it. And that that may have been the whole issue all along. Live and learn. Uh, I guess these Chevys are really prone to ground issues. I know they're prone to rust, that I do know. But um, I'm gonna be just posting every issue I'm having with this thing. And like I said, hopefully you guys Cause I don't see a lot of, I see a lot of Chevy, Chevy 2500s. This isn't the same as a Chevy 2500, it's an eight one liter. So apparently the wiring's a little different. Apparently some of the parts are a little different. I don't know. I, I, 
I thought this was exactly the same as my 6.0 liter. Apparently there's some subtle differences. So I'm reaching out. I joined the 8.1 liter engine group on Facebook to try to help get some of these things taken care of. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully as, as we move forward, I'll be able to get on here and, and have you guys uh, talk me through some shit. Yeah, Cause I need it. Uh, I'm, I'm not a horrible mechanic. Uh, I'm no far, nowhere near licensed, but I can turn wrenches. And I generally do halfway decent job. But I just I don't want to open this thing up until I get my Camaro back. The Camaro it's a whole nother story. <laughs> um and I'll wind up doing another video about that because I'll have uh, the dash cam footage. But basically I had a cold air intake and I dro I drove through a puddle. It was more like a how a road dips down and water forms in it. So it, the water was about that deep. And I drove the car through there several different times, never had an issue. But this time I pulled out of a parking lot and drove the other way through it. And apparently the water coming off of that tire was just enough to throw it right up into the cold air intake and lock the motor up. Yeah, stupid, real dumb. So that's in my buddy's shop now. We're getting that taken care of. Um, he said he's got he's gonna be getting it in in the next week. So hopefully I get her back soon. I miss her. It's been a long time. But I moved up from my 2006 liter suburban to this one, 2004, 81 liter. Um, gas gauge definitely works. That that moves a lot. A lot. Yeah, she's uh she's a thirsty bitch. So I kind of feel like I got a new suburban now. I ain't had the car in three or four months. So I get the car back. That's going to feel like a new car. <sighs> Jesus. You know, maybe my dumb bullshit on here will help some of y'all do not so much dumb stuff. We'll see. We'll see how it works. But anyway, just rambling. If you have that tick issue or that grinding issue behind your speedometer or anything like that, uh, let me know. Let me know what you did. Let me know what the issue was. Again, I don't want to tear the whole dash apart and just listen for it in case I screw something up and then I'm stuck without a vehicle. Once I get the Camaro back, I'll start digging into this thing. Uh, we got like two camping trips left this season. So she needs to tow. And I will tell you, I don't know if maybe the 6.0 liter was just wore out and tired. This thing is a whole night and day difference in towing. The whole night and day difference in driving, really. I mean, you can feel that low end torque. It's there. So, anyway, I'm going to shut this off before I just keep rambling, but y'all have a good one.